We begin today with Keenan walking into Spanish class and this goof ass nerd is trying to talk crazy. She gets moated and I'm wondering if anyone actually remembers that phrase. The school bell rings and it's time to learn how to order Chinese food in Spanish, which is good because the best Chinese food comes from places in LA that have Mexican people cooking. Kel walks in late to class beatboxing, which is ridiculous. The teacher asks why he was late and he reveals that he was grabbing Keenan's Game Boy for him. This 22 Jump Street undercover student tries snitching on him after he just admitted at the whole thing, worst narc ever. Keenan starts roasting her for clearly not being in high school and I tried doing some research and I couldn't technically find out how old she is, but she looks a cool 22 to 25. High school extras always so damn old. Now, to be fair, I think Keenan and Kel are like 20 here. Either way, they now have to perform a Spanish song this Friday. Back at Rigby's, Kel is trying to show Keenan the song he wants to perform, uh, Suavamente by Elvis Suavamente, besame. Keenan tries to hate, but the beat gets to him and he pulls out some castanets from his apron and starts doing his best flamenco. Rigby's corner store comes in wondering what all the hullabaloo is. They mock him for saying hullabaloo. They explain how they have to sing a song in Spanish class on Friday and Chris from Rigby's hates Fridays. He must have read Robinson Crow recently. He's got to do inventory all day by himself. Kel offers up Keenan services since it's a half day. Keenan now has malicious intent in his mind. Kel doesn't care and just hits his duck. Keenan and Kel return home home and Keenan is mad that his Friday is ruined, but he was about to spend it with Kel alone anyway, so what's the difference? Kyra comes in coughing and even coughs directly in her mom's face, which is wild disrespectful. Kyra is sent upstairs and she won't be at school for the rest of the week. I think the mom's about to wear her ass out. Now, if you learned anything from the theme song, you gotta watch Keenan because Keenan be scheming. They're feeling sick too now. You know what that means? They're taking Friday off the whole day. Kel hates this plan. The day is Friday and Kel comes in ready for school. Keenan reminds him that they're ditching and Kel was just hoping that Keenan forgot and decided to turn his hedonistic ways around. Keenan assures him and even shows him the notes that he wrote. Please excuse Keenan because he has an earache. Don't call us because it'll hurt his ear more. Kel asks, what about him? And Keenan just writes something on the end that says that he has an infected tongue. Thought Keenan was supposed to be the smart one. There's a knock at the door. It's a messenger. They use messenger to send this text message. Very advanced stuff. He warns them about how he used the ditch and now he works at a job that's gonna be obsolete in a few years. Keenan don't care. Now he'll call Chris to tell him that he's sick. As he's finishing up his call with Rigby's, his dad comes down the stairs and tells them that they better get to school. Keenan makes sure to push Kel in oncoming traffic before leaving. That's not cool. At school, the teacher is wondering where Keenan and Kel are. This uh, student teacher face as says they're tardy or as they say in Mexico AOS and tarde. She needs to shut up or as they say in Mexico caete la boca. The the burnout messenger delivers the text message and sells it perfectly. Keenan and Kel stop by the bank because this is before the recession and banks still made you go in to get cash instead of incentivizing you to use cards. These random truck drivers run in with no mask on talking about this is a robbery. I think they must have shot the security guard one of those JFK ice bullets because he hits the ground. The bank robbers are trying to get in and out this mug so they enlist the help of Keenan and Kel in robbing everybody. First they're assigned to go and grab the money but Kel suggests running everybody his pockets first. He's a real good assistant. They put Keenan on crowd control and Kel is over here separating the money so no one gets ripped off. Wow, what a good guy. Kel is getting hot because this is his first lick, so he decides to turn on this fan. G guess what a fan does to a giant pile of paper? Everyone looks like they're one of those wind booths where you gotta catch money, and the robbers are slipping and sliding trying to get that Skrilla. While picking everything up, they hear the sirens and they let the police know they ain't coming out. They inform the hostages that they're gonna be in there for a long time. Back Back at Keenan's house, the family catches a news report that says there's a bank robbery going on. The dad goes and grabs some popcorn. At the school, they're also watching the breaking news, which why are they watching the news in Spanish class? Not even like the Spanish channel or nothing. They're on some like Univision or like Telemundo or MTV Trace or something. The generic stoner character that's in every 90s Nick show is still in the class for some reason. I would say it's weird, but everyone in this class is too old to get drafted. So let him get an education too. Clearly this is night school or something. Keenan and Kel are helping to get rid of the security guard's body and Keenan realizes that they're on the news right now. Kel thinks that that's so cool but Keenan has to explain to him that everyone is gonna know that they're ditching school. Kel has a plan to get them out of this. I think he's trying to distract them by proceeding to rip all the skin off his wrist and ankle I'm sure. The robbers want to know what the hell he was doing and he just says he got discombobulated. They actually mock
hot kel for his vocabulary for saying discombobulated. The police get over the intercom and tell the bandits, quote, release the hostages and we won't beat you. They don't want to end up like the 45th minute of 44 minutes, so they contemplate giving up. Keenan actually tries to tell them not to release them just because he's trying to hide from the TV. Instead, release everyone but Keenan and Kel. It'll show the cops you're nice guys, but you mean business. The robber falls for this for some reason. Technically, there's nothing keeping any of these people here. These dudes don't have any weapons, just color coordinated outfits and these condom beanies. White dude don't even have gloves on anymore. Dave Chappelle's homie from Half Baked Face thinks they're rad, so that's something. He's colossally kicking it with all these teenagers. At Keenan's house, everyone thinks that whoever those kids are, they must be so brave. The dad just thinks they're a couple life risking idiots. He's apparently a great judge of character. At the bank, it's the most important part of any robbery, the negotiation. Light skinned robber man walks out with his face fully exposed. Great start. They want $1 million of unmarked bills. $1 million of marked bills. A car, a helicopter, maybe a couple of ski masks. I don't know. Kel suggests orange soda and Bobby Lashley's little brother ask why some orange soda. Kel loves orange soda. Is that true? Mm-hmm. I do, I do, I do, ooh. Billy Lashley proceeds to strangle Kel because that was probably the laziest execution of that orange soda bit. Keenan's family hears the orange soda on the news and they clearly know because who the hell else is obsessed with orange soda? Not even the best type of Fanta. The robbers are ready to give up and Keenan physically restrains them from leaving. He's definitely an accessory at this point. He tries his best motivational speech. Did Michael Jordan quit in the middle of the game? Not any specific game, but the game. Would a fat man quit in the middle of lasagna? Did George Washington quit when his cherry tree was kidnapped and taken to New Zealand? The robbers run the hell out because Keenan is scaring everyone with his dedication. The news reporters rush in and everyone knows now. Keenan's dad has a heart attack. Tragic. Rigby's corner store is relatively upset, but he just don't want to work, so that's on him. Jim Brewer notices that these are the sick dudes that he's dropping off the message for when he's the one who's been spending all day with a bunch of high schoolers wearing a trucker hat. Keenan and Kel managed to catch at least five felonies, so this is probably the season finale. Uh, all right, uh, seems that Keenan and Kel are out on bail or something because they're here for the outro. Keenan's still mad, and he tells Kel that he only needs to talk to him if it makes sense. Kel only talks if it makes dollars, so he pulls out a stack of the money he stole from the bank. Kel is truly the smart one. First, Keenan is thinking about returning the money. Then, he suggests flipping it before they return it. If you see Keenan in your DMs talking about, let me flip $500 to $10,000 in 30 days, just hit block.